So welcome to unit one of COMP 5 to 6. This will be about machines and models, the mathematical background a little bit of how can we make formal statements um, about algorithms, data structures, and their performance. And we will also touch on, on the big O notation, which is the ubiquitous language in computer science to express performance. Um, and you will just need to understand what it means and be fluent in using it uh, to be successful in this field. So let's get cracking. Um, I will cover now it forwards. Uh, we'll have um, these three topics. We'll first talk a little bit about um, what it means to analyze algorithms, um, what that is about. And um, then I'll, I'll present you the dominant model in algorithms in algorithms and data structures these days. Uh, again, this is more for your background information, um, but you will, you will find it useful if you dig deeper to know about this. Um, and lastly, we'll talk about the big O notation that I just advertised for. So first, um, what is an algorithm to get started with? Uh, I don't want to dwell into too formal a definition at this early point. Um, but for me, an algorithm is a sequence of instructions, like um, a, a cooking recipe. And so the way to think about this is you tell the computer what to do, and then it does it. That's a sequence of instructions. Uh, in modern times, algorithm has to come uh, has to has to become um, has become a, a meaning for for all sorts of more complex systems, usually involving some machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, they kind of grab this term from us, the true algorithms people, and uh, it also got a, a a weird negative connotation, like the uh, the A level algorithm from last summer, which is essentially just a little formula that someone decided. Uh, nothing malicious or wicked in it. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate, but I would, I would very much like you to follow my definition, definitely for this class. An algorithm is a sequence of instructions, and it does what you tell it, uh, what, what you tell the computer to do. Um, an algorithm is a little bit more than just an arbitrary uh, list of instructions. Um, we usually restrict it in the following sense. Uh, first of all, it has to be computer readable at least at the end. Um, we sometimes do these pseudocode algorithms in this class, and they're intended to be an, at an intermediate level, so um, a good programmer can easily implement it. But there should usually not be common sense needed in the human in the human understanding of it. Uh, you shouldn't require a human to execute this. That's for sure. Also, the sequence of instructions has to be finite. It's not an algorithm if you need to go through an infinite number of case distinctions. And sometimes these come in disguise. So that's why it's important to stress it. And lastly, it should solve a problem by which mathematicians and computer scientists understand a class of instances that are, well, a problem is a challenge. Uh, and in, in, this, in this meaning, it's you solve a more generic version. Instead of simply computing the sum of these two numbers, you have an algorithm to compute the sum of any two numbers, no matter what those numbers are. So the typical way to think about algorithms is that uh, there are a box like this, and then there's some input fed into the algorithm, and then it spits out an output. Uh, that's the way of, of thinking about it as a mathematical function. That doesn't capture all algorithms um, very nicely, but it's a, it's a good first approximation. Again, a typical example might make this uh, clearer than the abstract um, description. Um, an algorithm, I would say bubble sort is an algorithm, um, but it's not, uh, it's not about how exact, exactly you bring this in the form of code. It's not the Java code that you produce that implements bubble sort. The algorithm is more the conceptual idea of how bubble sort sorts. It's a bit vague, um, I agree. 
but it's it's again something that from examples it often makes makes sense. We have a second um, a second topic that we'll talk about in this class. Apart from algorithms, we also have data structures. They often go hand in hand. Uh, my definition for this class is a data structure is uh, two things. I have to say how I'm storing data. It's about representing a certain type of data. And I have to store this in computer memory. So I usually have to say how it encodes in binary uh, at the end of the day. And uh, the second part is um, a data structure has certain, up, certain queries, certain operations that it can support on the data. And you have to tell, you have to tell me algorithms that execute these, these operations. So an example that you might have seen before in some undergraduate algorithms class is a binary search tree. It tells you how to represent data. There is a certain way to store the nodes, and uh, they have pointers, et cetera. And then there's algorithms to insert new things, et cetera. Uh, if you haven't seen binary search trees before, I'll give a, a quick recap in the next unit, either tomorrow or uh, next, next Tuesday. Um, as always, if you have any questions, uh, just fire them up, uh, just shoot them in the Q&A. The, that concludes the, the first little introduction with just the definitions. Um, now, the first real part of this unit one is about algorithm analysis. So in this section, we will talk about what it means to analyze an algorithm and what we can hope to get out of this. So, for many problems, we have not just one algorithm, but there's many, many possible ones. And we want to find a good one or maybe even the best one for a certain task that we want to solve. And by good, we usually mean it should be fast and it should use little space, maybe just one of them. There might be other ways, there might be other measures um, depending on the application. Maybe you want an algorithm to have certain additional properties um, Depending on the on on the problem, it might have to be fair in that what it does um, satisfies certain certain fairness conditions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but for this module, we'll mostly focus on how fast it is and a little bit on how much space it uses. And that's for the for the basic toolbox of algorithms. That's usually the core interest that you have. And algorithm analysis is a way to uh, find good algorithms according to these measures. It's a way to compare algorithms and also to predict their performance in a given application. Uh, what you often have to do if you design a computer system is make a, a back of the envelope computation if this is at all feasible, if it's at all possible to use a certain approach that you came up with. And for that, you will need um, algorithm analysis uh, to make these uh, predictions if it's, if it's feasible to use a certain proposed method for this or not. Um, a simple thing you can do is you just implement your algorithm and time it and, and run it and time it. Uh, that's fine and it's useful to do, um, but it has restrictions, it has limitations. What you get is a result for a single machine. You can compute it, you can compare it on, on many different machines, but then often the results are inconclusive or they're different depending on the machine is also restricted to the actual inputs that you used, um, which might sometimes give a very skewed picture. Um, and again, it's restricted to a specific implementation, the one that you produced and tried out. And maybe there's maybe you made a stupid mistake in, in implementing something um, unnecessarily inefficiently, and someone else has a better idea. You wouldn't see this from um, doing experiments. And if you think back, uh, what I mentioned on the last slide of the, of the organizational unit, I want this course to be focused on the universal truths of algorithmics, uh, the, the statements that survive um, time and survive uh, changing uh, machines, like uh, statements that survive the Pentium 4, if that still exists at all. It's uh, probably all, I don't know. Laptops have the, the um, the new generation, but how about desktops? Well, uh, 
I lost track of that a bit because the universal truths are just so much more um, satisfying to, to work with. So what we want is we want to analyze an algorithm on a slightly more abstract model. So we want to go a little bit away from an actual machine, just as much as necessary to prove um, mathematical statements in this model. That sounds, that sounds more um, mathematical than it actually is in most cases. You will see examples again. And what also comes out of this is um, hypotheses that allow you to test. Um, you can validate whether the model you made is too abstract to be useful. Uh, for that, you would, again, do experiments. But those would rather focus on the model and not on comparing different algorithms. So what that means is we need models for uh, the different parts of, of an algorithm. And so that's what we'll uh, look at next. First of all, we need to somehow say, what are the inputs of an algorithm like? If you run experiments, you have to supply certain inputs, and that um, limits what you can get as a statement. Um, in algorithm analysis, you typically have three different models for inputs. You can either be very pessimistic. You always expect the worst possible input will come. As a guarantee, that's great. If you have a worst case performance that is sufficient for your application, you can be uh, sure that nothing bad happens. Uh, even if the worst of all input comes, it's still good enough. Best case performance is the opposite. You hope for the best and just pray. Uh, it's not used a lot, but it's sometimes uh, helpful to show how far worst and best case are away from each other. And uh, more useful but more challenging to get is an average case performance, where you assume that inputs come somehow randomly in a certain sense, and you will have to specify this. But you might, as, as you might for example, assume that every input is equally likely. And then you can uh, look at what's the, uh, the random cost. So for example, the expected cost of an algorithm under this um, distribution. And we'll, we'll see examples where the average case is very good, whereas the worst case can be bad. But uh, seeing this worst case in, in any application is astronomically unlikely. So you might just go ahead and use the uh, average case result. Why do we do these models, which are a fairly strong assumptions in each, cases, in each case? Um, the goal is to have performance as just a function of one parameter, and that's the, the input size n. What input size means depends a little bit on the problem. Again, for a concrete problem, it's often natural uh, what to pick, and we'll see examples. In uh, the loop invariant example, the length of the array, that would be a natural uh, measure for the input size. Um, sometimes we need, we need others. 